Honda is considering leaving IndyCar. This just feels very on brand for the Penske era of IndyCar ownership, right? Honda leaving would be absolutely devastating to the series. Honda's been with IndyCar since 1994. They were with IndyCar when no one else wanted to be. From 2006 to 2012, they were the sole engine provider until Chevy and Lotus came along. We just kind of ignore that whole Lotus part of, of history here. Honda's won seven of the last 12 Indianapolis 500s. They're coming off another driver's championship with Alex Blow in 2023. Losing them would absolutely be Penske's Waterloo. And that's topical right now. If you don't understand it, just Go ahead and look it up or go to the movies real quick. Either way, Honda leaving would be absolutely disastrous. And Honda says that the only reason they're considering leaving is because the costs continue to go up. And you're probably thinking, well, hasn't it been the same engine formula for, you know, over a decade now since 2012? And you'd be correct. It's the same 2.2 liter turbo engine that they've had for over a decade. But that's the problem. So you, of course, have that 2.2 liter formula, right? But the internals within that engine, you're able to develop those. And Honda and Chevy both spend millions of dollars every year trying to get more power out of those engines. So whether it's fine tuning the cams, the heads, the pistons, doesn't matter. Any type of engine part, they're constantly trying to make that more efficient and produce more power and more torque. That's why you see Chevy be better at some tracks and Honda be better at other tracks. But because of that development, they're spending entirely too much money and they're not making any money on their return. And that's something that they noted as well. They said that the amount of money we're putting in doesn't match the return that we're getting, not the same way that their WEC or IMSA programs do with an Acura brand that they're running in GTP. So they need something different. And you're probably thinking, well, wasn't IndyCar supposed to bring in a new engine formula? Yeah, you'd be correct. Last year, they scrapped the idea of the 2.4 liter turbo hybrid engine in favor of sticking with the current 2.2 liter formula that, and then just slapping a hybrid component to it, which if you think back to just last week, they announced that they would be delaying the introduction of that hybrid component until mid 2024 because it wouldn't be ready in time for St. Pete. Just another example of this Penske regime absolutely dropping the ball. And of course, they're going to blame it on supply chain issues and not everybody get their components in time and blah, 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 which is true. But you had a very long lead time to make all of this happen and once again, failed to get it done. Honda, of course, wants another OEM to come in. And you're probably thinking, well, that's more competition for them. Correct. But it also reduces their cost. So if you have a third manufacturer, that takes the field and splits it up into thirds. So they're going to have to supply less motors to everybody else, which is in turn saving them money. At the end of the day, IndyCar has absolutely failed at getting another manufacturer to join. Right, They got led down the path with Ferrari like they were Adriana going to see Christopher. And then by the time they realized that it was never going to happen, it was too late and we all know what happened there. They met their ultimate demise. And IndyCar just continually goes down these same paths. They continue to chase things that just aren't there. At this point, the Penske-led IndyCar is just completely incompetent. Charlie Kelly is more competent than them, and he could probably talk his way into getting a third manufacturer easier than Mark Miles and Roger Penske could. And I'm not saying that Penske is bad for the sport because he did keep the sport afloat during the COVID shutdown and everything like that. But at the end of the day, he hasn't really done anything to improve the sport, right? Have yet to get in a new manufacturer. We're not introducing any new racetracks, new ovals, because we're scared to go to anywhere new or it might cost too much money or anything like that. And I get it. You don't want to spend more money than you're bringing in. But at the same time, you got to spend money to make money, right? That's the old saying. And while IndyCar fails to have a big time event, NASCAR and Formula One continue to put on really large events across this country. I mean, NASCAR just ate their lunch with the Chicago street course, literally. I mean, like NASCAR ate so much money because they couldn't make money off of that event. But at the same time, it was the second most watched race of the season. Everybody was talking about it. It's going to be back again and they'll probably end up you know, coming close to turning a profit this year or at least breaking even. IndyCar, had a really big opportunity with the Nashville street course. The first year, that race was huge. And then they decided to put it on at like one o'clock in the afternoon, East Coast time during football season, and nobody watched it, which is really unfortunate because it's an okay race, and it's a race and a city where they could build a huge event out of it, and they failed to do so. The Penske-led IndyCar series has just been disappointing, right? It's kind of been led by geriatrics, just a bunch of old white guys who don't really have a vision on how to connect with younger fans, or literally any fans for that matter. Their IndyCar game failed, the new engine formula failed, they can't get to any new racetracks, they instead have an exhibition race during that month break between race number one and race number two, out of the Thermo Club, an ultra wealthy exclusive neighborhood where only fans that can pay $2,000 a ticket can go to watch. Not exactly the fan-friendly event that you need. 
especially not near one of the largest media markets in the country. Granted, Long Beach Grand Prix does happen right outside of Los Angeles, but to have a big event like that, one that you hype up as being a big time event, a million dollar race, which they have to share some of the profit with the people that live there. Don't love that idea, it's very odd, unless it's going to charity, in which case it's fine. But, you know, it's another example of them not understanding who their fan base is. And it's super unfortunate. And now this is just another example. Honda's looking uh, outside of IndyCar now to spend their money. And if IndyCar doesn't come back with, like, new cost-cutting measures, Honda's going to just peace out and, and go do something else. Marshall Proof from Racer.com, of course, wrote the story and broke it. And he asked Honda, like, what are you going to do with this money if you don't go IndyCar racing? And they mentioned that a NASCAR program is a possibility, which... They have had conversations with NASCAR over the last four years, but nothing's ever really materialized out of that. They said they could have a bigger involvement in Formula One, which, of course, Honda will become a power unit supplier in 2026 for the Aston Martin team, which would be very odd to have Aston Martin, Cognizant, Aramico, Honda, F1 team. Well, I don't know how they're going to frame it, but it's going to sound very stupid. Regardless, if they leave IndyCar, that is a massive blow. And one that I don't want to see happen. I think everybody that's an IndyCar fan, you might not describe yourself as an IndyCar fan. There's some of them out there, right? But it's like, you want to support this series so badly, right? They do a really good job with the on-track product. IndyCar racing is some of the best racing out there, especially on four wheels. It's better than Formula One. It's better than NASCAR most weeks. But at the end of the day, the series continually does nothing to help itself grow. Their social media presence is an absolute joke. Their online presence, a joke. They put their docu-series on the CW. No, no offense to the CW. Sure, it's accessible to tons of American households because it's just over the air. But it's not a channel where you're going to go looking for IndyCar at. It's not Netflix with Drive to Survive. And it just feels like every time IndyCar wants to do something, they decide to do the great value version of it. Instead of just going ahead and doing what you should do, they decide to cut corners and then they're like, oh yeah, this is good enough. And that's kind of how they treat their fans. This is good enough. And that's really unfortunate. So hopefully Honda doesn't leave because IndyCar desperately needs them. It creates a great rivalry with Chevy. And at the end of the day, the only way you're going to get a new manufacturer to join is to change up the engine formula. Because right now, why would Toyota or Ford or anybody else want to come join IndyCar when Honda and Chevy already have a 12-year head start on them with this current engine formula? Yeah, the hybrid component adds a new little twist to it, but the internal part, the internal combustion part of this engine, they still have a huge head start. Going to a 2.4 liter formula should have attracted new manufacturers, but of course, IndyCar couldn't figure out how to find one. And that's really unfortunate. And it's something that Honda mentioned as well with the WEC and IMSA programs, because in the top class there, GTP hypercar, there's a lot of manufacturer support, a lot of factory efforts going forward, like eight to nine different manufacturers that are joining or have joined already. And because of that, it keeps the cost down. And that's something that Honda's looking for, get more manufacturers involved. But at the end of the day, if nobody wants to join, then IndyCar's got to find a way to, to entice them. And they just haven't been able to do that yet. So hopefully IndyCar doesn't leave. I just don't have a ton of faith in what Penske is doing with IndyCar right now. And I could be wrong, right? There could just be this grand plan that they haven't enacted yet. It just doesn't feel like that's ever going to happen. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.